Good afternoon and uh, greetings to you. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. How are you? This is Lisa Bubari and this is my weekly Heal Talk Tuesdays where I take approximately half an hour and speak about healthy things and uh, wow oh my god before i even get to what i talk about guess what hello gabby hi don i just had to say hello to my two of my favorite women thank you hope your journey was absolutely wonderful gabby i don't know where you are but looks like you are safe and i was thinking about you and don i miss you so much i saw the beautiful pictures at the ocean or wherever you were with women so thank you for being present here today uh, this is uh, incredible because we are at the end of the month of september the ninth month is coming to fruition and it's like Wow, what happens at the end of each nine months? Uh, it's like time for birthing. It's like coming through the chrysalis and uh, from being a worm into becoming a butterfly. And there is nothing more beautiful and delicate and uh, just glowing than a butterfly. Butterflies are just mesmerizing. I know I have a video last year in front of my office. I opened the door and this beautiful butterfly just came, you know, fluttering and just I held my hand and the butterfly just sat, sat in the palm of my hand. And for just a second, I was like mesmerized with its beauty, its delicacy and just how light and precious they are and when we look at a butterfly before they become a butterfly it's just a sorry to say it's an ugly worm and it's covered in this like a veil it's like liney veil and and that is what this today's message is all about it's unveiling to freedom and what does unveiling to freedom uh, mean to me mean to so many of us and it's become my passion it's become my vision it's become uh, it's become my new work of talking about this and doing about it because just think about it from the day that we are conceived right we're gonna go back to how we got conceived but I'm sure all of you understand how we got conceived is by a the normal natural way and I'm not talking about in uh, in vitro or uh, any of that but how we are conceived is how a man enters the intimacy part of a man and a woman and the conception where it happens and then that sperm and egg that come together and as it starts to grow it creates this maybe a chrysalis a veil around it and as a child, as a baby is about to be born, they are protected in the sack inside the mother's womb. As we are to come through the vaginal opening and for the baby to turn and come out, it comes through with the sack, with this beautiful, invisible veil. And as it comes through, the baby is taken and they clean the face, they clear the sack, everything so the baby can breathe. 
And as we do that, we become an individual only when the umbilical cord is cut. So from the moment that the baby is separated from mom, that's when we become our own individual being. We are mom's daughter or son, but that's when the child becomes individual and it's not connected to the mother's womb. So from then, we traditionally go on having this invisible protection that we call it from God. But what happens for females is another veil gets broken or come through is when we become women the first time that menstrual period starts. It just comes to a breaking. I know this might be a little bit uncomfortable for certain people, but this has become my mission. And look at how many challenges and barriers and breaking throughs we go through. And after our initial period, every month, it goes through a cleanse, as my grandmother used to say. It's like your body clears and cleanses every month. Hmm? And it's a renewal. It's a renewal. It happens three to four weeks, and once every uh, three weeks, or once every four weeks, once every month. Everyone is different. And that is called the extraordinary part of who we are because we're all ordinary and yet there is this extra special part in us so after that the next phase is our intimacy with someone we like uh, someone we are infatuated with someone we have either a puppy love or a real love uh, depending on to your tradition to your uh, culture how long you wait, how long, but that intimacy, it's the breaking of another veil of becoming a woman, right? And then we go through so many other challenges as we are accepting our femininity, our body, our body changes, uh, the whole menopause, not before, before you have a menopausal, the entire beauty that happens. And normally after an intimacy and if there is a marriage or a connection, that's when the baby starts again. But before the baby starts, in most traditions, and I'm talking about traditional homes, cultural homes, uh, places that there is more of tradition happening. It's the man and a woman who are to come together. And nowadays it can be two women. But normally we're talking about a heterosexual relationship where there is a man and a woman. And what happens? It's... Um, and it doesn't matter which tradition it is. It, the Jewish have this canopy. Uh, in the Muslim, we have another canopy. In Christianity, we have the church. And no matter where, what tradition we are, even Buddhism, we go and kneel in front. And before we do that, the father or the person who is about to give the daughter away walks the daughter walks the woman down the aisle. And at that time, most traditions, the woman, the girl, is wearing the veil. And then the father lifts up the veil, kisses both cheeks, puts the veil back, puts the hand, walks it just a tad more, and then hands off the daughter to the husband-to-be. 
and then it's after the tradition, after the ceremony, the husband unveils and kisses the woman, accepting her as his wife. And then they stand beside each other, facing one another. And then they walk down the aisle and they go to their marriage ceremonies. And after that, what comes? The intimacy of making babies, which starts the cycle of that baby and the connection and the new veil. So why am I talking about this? Because there is so much of challenges and breakthroughs we go through that we look at life in negativity, in challenges, in hardships, and not realizing that through life we have gone through so many of it and we've taken that as, well, this is the way it is. This is how it's supposed to be. Yes, for many of us, yes. For millions, yes. And yet we negate all the challenges that we have overcome, that we chose, and we placed ourselves in there. Because whatever has happened to us has happened for us. There's part of the challenges we have gone through or the traditions that we have abide by that we have done it because of family, because of circumstances, because this is the way it's supposed to be. And you know, I know so many marriages break down or break away, break apart because they did it for someone else. Or they got married and said, well, this was the wrong person because it's not. How many jobs have we taken? How many classes and schools we have gone to? How many things have we done just to appease or satisfy someone else? Most probably our parents, family members, um, or the people that we feared. And we did it just to make things right for them. And throughout this time, we forget. We forget us. We forget what do I want. We forget that if I am going through another challenge, what is this challenge going to teach me? What do I want to learn by going through this? Because not everything is hunky-dory and glorified. Having a baby is not easy. It's, uh, it's magnificent. That's how we have to look at it. It's the entire thing is just a magnificent thing. Yes, we go through the nausea and then we go through getting sickness some people do some people don't it's the same as uh, women who go through our monthly menopausal thing some people have cramps others don't so it's not that this is the way it's supposed to be but oh, there are so many aspects of humanness humanness we're all human and, and there is no perfection, but we are extraordinary humans. And for someone climbing a mountain is sport. And for me, it's not climbing a rock that to me feels a sport, but you give me jumping from a plane, I'm going, yes, let's do this, because to me, that's my thrill, not going up a hill, even though it's all about height. You see, people look at the fear aspect of it. Aren't you afraid of the height? Well, the person who's climbing up a rock or a mountain and a hilltop, they have learned how to position themselves and they accept 
the risks. Every single thing in our life has a risk factor and a joy factor. Uh, driving a car is a risk factor, but look at the benefits of it. You drive, you're in control, you can go anywhere you want, you can speed up, you can slow down, you can park and you can be in your car and say, this is my car. And your car moves you forward to all the places that you want to go. In the meantime, you are with thousands of other people or just one person in your lane that is next to you. And there could be a kid playing across the street that throws the ball and then you have to break. And, you know, so there's consequences in every aspect. From the moment we get pregnant to the moment that we finish our cycles and we go into another cycle of womanhood, which is the menopausal cycle, and our mood fluctuates up and down, up and down, more so than before, and then to another phase of coming to the end of the cycle of life. So when we look at life, we see every single day is joy. Every single day is love. Every single day is a challenge. I had someone message me from last night. We've been messaging back and forth, back and forth. And for her to say she is completely so depressed, so much hurting, that she has tried all kinds of therapy, that she feels broken down, and uh, that no matter what she does, that she sees no way out. And she's seeking from everywhere, everywhere. And my, my answer was, have you looked within yourself? The things that you feel inside, the things that you do, because no matter where we go, it's us taking us to from this work to that work, from this relationship to the other relationship, from this office to another, or from one therapist to another. It's not about changing jobs. It's not about changing therapists. It's finding within yourself. What do I want? What makes me happy? And if I am miserable, what is the situation that I have placed myself that I feel so miserable? And some may say, but I had no choice. And those are the ones that I work with. For you to raise the bar, raise your self-esteem, and realize you do have a choice. We all do. But do we want to take that choice? Do we want to act on that choice? If we go to an auto dealership and we want a car, most of us, people like me who love cars, <laughs> love cars, we start thinking about the car we want. Uh, and we start looking at all kinds of cars to see which one do I want. And then every time that we go from one showroom to another showroom to another showroom. What is it that we are doing? The biggest buyers of cars are women. Men buy it because of its strength, its noise factor, vroom, 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 right? Um, or how big it is, uh, how fa fast it can go, or how it can climb if it's a people or four-wheel drivers or guys who are into sports, they want to look if they're going to hunting and fishing and they, you know, camping, if their car can take that. Women look at a car a different way. How does it feel? 
and then we put our hands on the wheel and then we touch the console we sit and we position our body how does that feel so it's the feeling and then we buy it or lease it but we walk away with it it's how we feel in there how does the car make me feel do I like the color? Do I like the feel of it? And yes, we love the speed of it. And safety, safety, safety. See, safety, women, safety. Even if I'm going 60, 70, and I might even push it to 75, is this a safe car for me? Is it a safe car for my kid? Is it a safe car for my dog? Safe car. So safety becomes our thing. We buy the things we want, not necessarily what we need, until we come to the place of knowing what is it that we need and for what. Yes, I have an established business. Yes, I work with so many people, but it wasn't like this all the time. I truly had to heal my ovarian cysts and understand why my body was creating the ovarian cysts, all these cysts and all this pain and why my body was doing this. And I learned all that through hypnotherapy. If it was not the acupuncturist that I went to and he didn't give me this sheet of paper saying hypnosis can help with ovarian cysts. And for me to laugh and say, what does up there have to do with down there? I would have never picked up the phone to call Patricia Burbank, who 19 years ago helped me through hypnotherapy connect inside internally to myself, to my body and have, you know, you may th think this is different, but having a dialogue with my body, it's as if asking, why? Why? My third time having a cyst, why am I going through this? Not realizing what a painful marriage I was in. My body was rejecting intimacy. And I have not shared it so openly. But my body was saying no more pain. Ah, refuse. So I'm going to create something that I give you the pain. And by doing that, so there was no intimacy for weeks and weeks. And then after surgery, they did it like a C-section. And the first time I had it, it was 9.2 centimeters. That's the size of a grapefruit. The second time I got my surgery, that they cut it again, it was 8.7 centimeters. Each time, weeks before, during, and after the surgery, no intimacy, no intimacy. So my body was doing something for me, not to me. It was doing something for me. And that is why it's become my mission, it's become my vision, it's every aspect of the work that I do is help you tap within to heal within. That's the work that I embody. That's why I show up for you, for my clients. I stand beside you to hold your hand or just be there. It was my third time that I, through hypnotherapy, we ask my body to heal by realizing what was happening, by realizing what was happening. And today, my body is absolutely wonderful. Since then, that I have been practicing and helping others, 
I have helped myself through so many different challenges. Now here is the most interesting thing. This Friday, I am going to one of the most spiritual places that I am calling it that. It may be another place may be more spiritual than this, but I am calling it a spiritual place because where I'm going for the next few days to do the work that is going to take me beyond where I have already explored and done the work, I'm going to go through, break through other barriers, other challenges to conquer others in order for more to be for me to be a better vessel a better coach a better therapist a better mentor friend and human being for everyone else and that kind of a work is not an end but we do this. We all do this. From kindergarten to junior high school to high school to some people go to university or to a workforce. We break through barriers for us. Because if I'm not proud of the work that I do and you're not proud of your own greatness, and I'm not saying for you to toot your horn and walk around, yes, that I'm an expert. It's not being an expert, but do the extraordinary step, one step at a time, and be the expert in that. And toot your horn on your greatness. And know that we all have potential. That potential drops us. But if we believe in our own greatness, if we believe in ourselves, like my friend Don, who her mission has become to help children in Africa, and another friend of mine, Carolyn, that helps everyone with sickle cell in Kenya, and the person that is right here next door to me, who's helping children of her community because we all have somebody we are helping and if you're a grandmother you're helping your grandchildren if you're a mother you're helping your children you're helping your partner if you're a teacher you're helping children we're always helping someone that's your greatness that's your beauty appreciate accept and as I do this I say evoke what was embrace what is the reality right here right now and say thank you to yourself because of all the things you have broken through all the veils you have broken through to be where you are today and there might be more other challenges you're going to conquer so say thank you. Thank you to you. No one has done it for you. No therapist can do it for you. It is you taking the step to say, I'm ready to evolve to the next phase, to become healthier, stronger, better, loving, and full of joy and love with it. If today's message was beneficial to you, please click and share, like, love, whatever. I will continue to be here every Tuesday and next week I will be here present from somewhere around the world And maybe share something completely different for you and with you. Until next week, you take care.
because you matter. You matter to me and you matter to so many others. Bye. Hmm.